In this video, we will be seeing about the switched mode power supply unit used in most of the recent electronic equipments. And then we will compare the linear regulated power supply unit with the SMPS unit. We have used this type of regulated power supply unit in laboratories. Mainly we used to give the supply voltage for the ICs from this type of power supply unit. Basically, it is a AC to DC converter. We used to plug this to AC pin and here we get plus 12 volt or minus 12 volt plus 15 volts, 5 volts. You can get it from the power supply unit. So they are basically AC to DC converters. What is the function of power supply unit? Suppose I am taking 5 volts from this uh, power supply. Irrespective of the changes in the load, it has to maintain 5 voltage. Suppose I am taking 15 volts means it should give 15 volts even if I vary the load within a certain limit. Similarly, if there is a fluctuation in supply voltage within a specified limit, it has to give the same 5 volts or 15 volts. So the function of a power supply unit is to provide a constant voltage even when there is a variation in the input supply or output load. There are two types of power supply unit. One is linear regulated power supply which we use in laboratory. The other one is the switched mode power supply which is used in most of the electronic equipments like um, TV, computer. Uh, you can see that a small power supply unit will be there which is basically an SMPS. Let us see the block diagram of the regulated power supply unit. We know the function of a regulated power supply unit is to provide a regulated output to the load. It means that even for the variations in the load or in the supply, it has to provide a constant output to the load. So we have AC supply. So this is the AC supply with the frequency of 50 Hertz. This will be given to a transformer. It is a step down transformer and it operates at 50 Hertz because the supply frequency is 50 Hertz. So the size of the transformer will be usually large. And this transformer output will be given to the rectifier. So you will get a rectified output. This output has to be filtered out because the ripple is high here. So a capacitor can be used to filter the this rectified output you are getting a filtered output here but this output depends upon the size of the capacitor if the capacitor size is large your ripple can reduce but cost of the capacitor will increase but if you decrease the capacitor size ripple will be more and this output depends upon the load so as the load changes, this output will also change. So this is basically an unregulated output. So you have to give this output to a regulator so that you can give a regulated output to the load. So what is this regulator? It basically consists of a series pass transistor. So this transistor operates in the active region or linear region. We know in transistor there are three regions, cutoff region, saturation region and active region. Cutoff and saturation region accounts to the on and off period of the transistor. So active region there will be more power dissipation. So as, the, as this transistor always operates in the active region, power dissipation will be higher. When the power dissipation is high, you have to go for a higher size heat sink to dissipate the heat. So, however, this regulator output will be a regulated output which will be like this. So, this can be given to the load. 
So this is the block diagram of a linear regulated power supply unit. Let us see the advantages and disadvantages of the linear regulator power supply. It has a good voltage regulation that is for changes in load, uh, load and supply voltage uh, variations. It can give you a good regulated output and there are no EMI issues because it operates at very low frequency of 50 Hertz and it has a simple control and it is a established technology because it has been used for several years. If you see the disadvantages, first thing it has a very bulky transformer because we are using 50 Hertz transformer and the transistor operates in active region. Power dissipation is more because of that you need large heat sink and the efficiency of the system is very low. Next we will see about switched mode sub power supply unit so what is switched mode power supply as the name suggests the power to the load is controlled by a switch so load is here supply is here so the input to the load is controlled by this switch which will be operated at a very high frequency and this switch will be either in on condition or off condition that is the transistor will be in either cutoff mode or saturation mode in linear regulated power supply it will be in active mode so in cutoff and saturation mode the power loss is very less so this system is said to be very efficient so SMPS is an power power supply unit integrated with the switching regulator where the power transfer will take place efficiently. Let us see the block diagram of an SMPS unit. So the input is AC which is first rectified and then filtered. So this is the output of this block. This rectified output is given to a high frequency switch. It means that it will be turned on and off at a very high frequency so that your output will be like this pulses. So this pulses will be given to a high frequency transformer. So the output is a square pulse or you get a positive and negative pulse. This will be again rectified to get a DC output. So the advantage of this uh, system is that you use a very high frequency transformer. So the size of the transformer is very less and moreover the switch is a, operates either in saturation mode or cutoff mode. So power dissipation is also less and overall the system efficiency is high. If you see the diagram of SMPS, you can see the size is very small because of the um, high frequency, the inductor as well as the transformer size gets reduced. So uh, this uh, uh, appears to be more compact compared to that of a linear regulated power supply. Let us see the advantages and disadvantages of SMPS. So it is operated in cutoff or saturation mode. So power dissipation is less. So you get high efficiency and size is also get reduced because of low power, dis power dissipation. If you see the disadvantages, you are operating at very high frequency. So you will get naturally spikes will be there. EMI interference will be there. Complex control. Now let us compare the linear regulated power supply unit with SMPS. So it has low efficiency whereas SMPS has high efficiency. Here switch operates in active region, here cutoff or saturation region. Here more dissipation, less dissipation. Here bulky transformer, here small size high frequency transformer. But if you see the voltage regulation, linear regulated power supply unit has a good regulation compared to that of SMPS. And it has easy control whereas the control is complex in case of a switched mode power supply. And since it operates in low frequency, there are no EMI issues but 
EMI issues will be in SMPS. So depending upon our requirement, you can choose a linear regulated power supply or SMPS or in some cases you can cascade both. That is if you want a tighter voltage regulation, you can use a SMPS and then use a, a linear regulated power supply at the output so that you will get tighter voltage regulation. There are different topologies of SMPS, flyback type, forward, converter, push-pull type, half bridge, hatch bridge. So you can choose any type of SMPS depending upon the various factors like efficiency, size, weight, output power, output regulation, what will be the voltage ripple allowed, cost of the converter. So, based on this, you can choose any of the topologies for your application. So, the points to remember here are linear regulated power supplies have tight voltage regulation and no EMI issues, but they are less efficient and of larger size. If you see SMPS, they are highly efficient and small size, but they have EMI issues. So if you see the size of the transformer, this is a 50 hertz uh, uh, transformer. So the corresponding um, high frequency transformer, this is a 20 hertz transformer. You see the size, it gets reduced. So depending upon a requirement, you can choose a linear regulated power supply or SMPS. But normally nowadays, most of the equipments have SMPS. If you want to uh, read about this topic, you can visit this website and if you like the video, do subscribe to our Read Electric Vehicle channel. Thank you. These are some of the references.